Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Cesium, specifically Cesium for Unreal Engine. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, you're probably a regular of this channel. I talked about Cesium winning an Epic Mega Grant back in June of 2020. If you are not aware of this, you should hit that like and subscribe button and stay up to date with the latest and greatest of the world of game development. So anyways, back to Cesium. They are the maker of open world data. They created a plugin for Unreal Engine, and the reason why we are talking about today is that plugin plugin is now available and that plugin is now available for free, which is actually pretty cool. So what we're going to do is immediately jump in, take a look at the hands-on. There's also a project available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. So Cesium for Unreal Engine is implemented as an engine plugin. You need to download and install it. And then there is a bunch of samples you can run through. Let's start with the eye candy, then we'll get back into the specifics. So if you don't understand Cesium, basically it is a database of spatial data for the entire world. If you've used uh, Google Maps in 3D, you got a pretty good idea of what we were dealing with here. And now you can use that data directly inside of Unreal Engine. So here we are in Unreal. This is uh, Melbourne, Australia. We'll go ahead and hit play and you can see what we are dealing with. So you're going to have multiple levels of detail. Initially, it comes in pretty awful uh, and then it comes in quite good. This is probably of a caliber, good enough resolution that you could use this for a flight simulator uh, quite effectively. Uh, as we move in, we get LOD updates, but again, you're gonna have some jank from 3D scans for sure, and the pop-in is brutal. I'm hoping you can fix this with an algorithm, but this gives you an idea. This is the entire world. So if I keep zooming out, so here we go, we're in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, now we're basically just above Australia, and we kind of just keep going and keep going let's let's move them whoa whoa that's a little too far all right let's 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 not do that okay i, I went a little too far <laughs> uh so let's go here we'll take a look at another example this one is a bit more on the ground uh this is using sub millimeter resolution uh for actual handling on the ground stuff but again i actually find um uh, the photogrammetry results are just a little too jank to be used in an actual game the closer you get to it the worse it looks so let's go take a look around this level so you can see here this is Union Station in Denver, scans to a very close resolution using uh, photogrammetry. Ironically, Cesium is actually uh, implemented into Capturing Reality or Reality Capture, a uh, photogrammetry suite that Unreal or Epic Games recently purchased themselves. So uh, that whole world is kind of coming together. But here you can see this is Denver. Uh, again, as you zoom out, so we'll give it a sec. I think we'll get pop-in fix on this one. Not sure. Actually, that might be the resolution we're stuck with. Okay. But as you come down, you're going to find certain areas, certain landmarks are at a much higher resolution in the scan that they've worked with. And you can go ahead and actually get your game in. So here we've got an avatar level character here on the ground. Um, at first glance, it looks okay, but I can't really imagine using this level of resolution in a game as it stands today. I think they just need to get that uh, up a bit. Parts of it are believable. And then parts of it are simply not. Those trees look like blobs. Uh, and that's just a matter of uh, point cloud scans uh, data. They, they, need to, they need to do a bit better in that regard. So again, I think where this would really shine is more, um, I, I guess if you have an algorithm to do touch up for you, you could do racing level games, but I think more before like uh, higher level flight sim type stuff. And of course, uh, if you're using Unreal Engine for non-gaming stuff with a uh, whole world mapping in it, obviously Cesium is useful in that regard. But in the world of gaming, uh, without a little bit more uh, cleanliness on how these things work, you're going to need... Um, you're going to need to do some post-processing to get everything looking nice. So that's another one of the examples we've got going on here. Uh, it's currently got my computer very unhappy about something, so let's let's find out what that is. It's system. That's always encouraging. Okay, so let's hope it's back now. Now, as you can tell by the memory usage, this can be a bit of a pig, and it's streaming all of the data in from Cesium services. So... Um, yeah, if you don't have a decent network speed, and there's also some limitations on the textures that you can bring in, but that is another example they've got going on here. Uh, that example doesn't work for anything, and this example is just kind of showcasing how uh, you can use uh, the Unreal Engine graphical effects with cesium data to make things look just a little bit better. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll run that so you can see it in action. So you can use post-processing from uh, 
the Unreal Engine special effects. So we got those lens flares going on, environmental clouds uh, or volumetric clouds going on and so on. And you can see in this particular case, it does definitely look better. So as I mentioned, cesium data could quite easily be used for uh, flight simulator type games for sure. Uh, this resolution is probably about on par with what you're seeing in um, flight simulator right now. Uh, so there is definitely some utility. It's just when you get close to the ground where it starts kind of falling down a bit. Now, the cool thing is with how this all works, let me just go back to the very first example uh, that is here. All right, so open that up. Uh, this is off the coast of, I'm not actually sure it says, but this is uh, somewhere in the world. I, I'm not gonna zoom out because I'm gonna go too far. Uh, but what you can do in terms of working with cesium, you're gonna notice over here, there are a number of different actors in place when you've installed the plugin. The big one being the 3D tile set, that's your actual world. So go over here, let's take a look. All right, so the 3D tile set is this guy, the world trains. You're gonna notice that, that the entirety of the world uh, and then in order to move around in it, you're using a geo reference. So you can use this guy to jump to anywhere in the world. If you know the latitudinal and longitudinal coordinates, for example, I think Toronto is something like negative 74 and 45. I may have made it. Oh no, that's looking awfully green. All right, a quick look up. It's 43 and negative 79. Let's just pop that over to the side here. We will take Unreal Engine and we'll pop that over to the other side there. All right, so we want to go to GeoReference. Come on. Um, all right, let me give myself some space back. Uh, where did you go? GeoReference, okay, it deselected. So I wanna go to 43.741667. And I wanna to go to latitude of negative 79.373333. All right, there we go. So now apparently we should be somewhere in Toronto. We're probably not high enough. Let's, let's go higher, lower. All right, where are you Toronto? Let's get rid of that guy right there. So 43 and negative 79. I should be in Toronto, but I don't know what's going on here. Just zoom up, zoom up. Hmm, maybe those are reversed. Let me just cut that, paste that there, and put you at negative 79.3. All right, there we go. Yeah, so they were reversed. So here we are, somewhere around Toronto. I kind of whiffed the second value there. But as you can see, you've got the ability to basically hop around the world at any particular time uh, so go on down here. I think that's the DVP right there. And off we go down the coast. And if you go ahead and play this, it'll start filling in with 3D data, assuming it's available, and go play some golf. Let's go play some golf right here. There's a golf course nearby. And so you can see, you can actually jump anywhere in the world if you so wish. Um, yeah. Uh, and Otherwise, there's a couple of other values here. Let me just go back and show you on one of their maps. So let's go here back to Denver. And we don't save. They also have a global weather system in place. So let me just, whoa, I got my mouse set really sensitive for movements right now. All right, so here we go. They've also got this value over here for um, the time of day. So we got the uh, sun and sky. So what I can do things is change the, the daytime, the nighttime. As you're seeing, you're getting accurate real world uh, position sun for the time of day. And boom, I believe this is solar time. I have no idea what solar time is. I'm guessing it's the same as UTC, but I, I don't actually know. I'd have to look that up. But you've got control over the real-time sun positioning in your world. So if you want to recreate the world accurately, you can do so. So that's a quick look at the new uh, plugin available for Unreal Engine. Again, it is implemented as a plugin to the engine. And this sample project, everything we looked at today is also available for download. So let's go back over and take a look at some of the details. So again, that is the new plugin that is available. Uh, in terms of Cesium itself, it is a platform for 3D Geospatial. The project that you're probably most interested in, other than the plugin, is on the back end. You're using something called Cesium Ion. This is a tileable 3D content and hosting in the cloud. Basically, it is the giant database of the world. Um, as you can see, it's, it's being used by uh, some pretty big companies such as Bentley, <laughs> uh, but Uber and, and so on are using this right now. Um, 
the, there is now the season for Unreal Engine. You see some of the details of this plugin are it's free and open source. So source code is actually available out there. Link is, I think it's under the Apache license, but it's definitely under one of the usable uh, open source licenses. Uh, high scale accuracy for Unreal Engine, visualize massive high resolution real world geometry and 3D content at runtime using 3D tiles. It's integrated with Unreal Engine actors, actors and components, blueprints and other features. And one of the cool things going on right now is users evaluating Cesium for Unreal Engine can enjoy unlimited or unrestricted streaming with their free Cesium Ion community account until May 31st. So you want to check this out right now until May 31st is the ideal time because it is completely and utterly free. And optional subscriptions to Cesium Ion for one click access to global curated 3D content, including terrain imagery, 3D cities, and photogrammetry, which by the way, I haven't done. Uh, you, know, you don't have to do that to check out this demo, but if you want to use it yourself to do uh, more so, you're going to need to set up for a free account. Now on the topic of free and so on, how much is Cesium itself? Obviously this is where they make their money. So that plugin for Unreal Engine is completely free. It is open sourced. Uh, there's other libraries for using Cesium like Cesium JS. It is free and open source as well, but this data is not completely free. There is definitely a free version out there. So there's three different or four different tiers here if you count custom as a tier. Uh, so you've got community, commercial at 150 bucks a month and premium. And so you're looking at the community version. Any of you can sign up for this completely free. You're looking at a limit of five gigs of storage, 15 gigabytes per month of data streaming, a thousand Bing map sessions, um, 50,000 geocodes per month and so on. Uh, and then you start getting into these bigger deals. So this is 10 times and 10 times and then five times. And then, hey, it didn't go up at all, cheapos. It actually doesn't go up at all on any of them. Uh, but uh, you're looking basically each tier, you're going up in the amount of storage and the amount of data you can stream. How much data this is consuming, I have no idea at all. But the cool thing is you can actually get in here, uh, use the community tier and actually find out for yourself. So you wanna check this out. If you've got the need to stream real world stuff, or you wanna create a game prototype using real world locations or whatever, you can now do so directly in Unreal Engine uh, and there is free community hookup. And right now until May 31st, uh, this part doesn't matter. You've got unlimited streaming. So uh, if, if you're going to uh, mess around or use a whole lot of data, it makes sense to do so between now and May 31st when it is free. So that is it. Cesium, they won that Epic grant last year, and now they're available for Unreal Engine. Uh, it is an Unreal Engine plugin. Uh, it's open source also if you are interested in checking out how they implemented it. Uh, definitely an interesting project. Again, when you get kind of on the ground level stuff, there's so much potential. If you could get this resolution in most cities, uh, for backgrounds and you kind of get some of that uh, pop in or draw fixed up. Again, when you play it, you get a higher caliber. So let's go ahead and we'll play this instead. So you see here, loads in, the details and resolution get better over time. Same for the background buildings and so on. Uh, other than certain things in the world like the tree, actually that guy's a lot lower resolution. Is this gonna pop in at all or is that it? See that, level or that caliber that we're seeing right there is absolutely useless for a game. That level right there could easily be used uh, if you're creating a road level game, driving around in, in real world cities and so on. So perfect, highly usable, not so much. So it seems to be just a matter of uh, how well the data was scanned over here. Again, trees suck. Uh, you would have to do an algorithm to recognize and replace trees definitely to make it look realistic. Uh, but some of the buildings, as long as it was scanned with a high enough uh, resolution and you got the LOD streaming into a good enough state, uh, you could definitely use that for a racing style game. But again, where I think this stuff would really shine is in above the earth stuff like flight simulations and so on. So let me know. Oh, actually, you know what? Our trees are getting better. They're still a little bit unrealistic, but they're definitely better. That would be usable driving by. But again, you got to get these LODs down better and the streaming needs to be, you know, instantaneous as opposed to what we were seeing in this particular example. But still a lot of potential in this one. So that there is Cesium for Unreal Engine. Basically, you can now draw the entire world in Unreal Engine. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.